The biggest story so far is about Algerian boxer Iman Khalif, who's been doing a great job in the women's boxing tournament. Some people would say too good. Some critics questioning whether Khalif should have been allowed to compete in that ring at all and claiming that Khalif is a man or transgender, something IOC officials have emphatically denied. The Algerian boxer was born female, was registered female, lived her life as a female, boxed as a female, has a female passport. This is not a transgender case. Seems pretty open and shut to me, right? She was born a woman, lives as a woman and boxes other women. So what is the argument against that? This is such an outrage. Look at this. This is a man. This is a man who is competing in the boxing tournament for women. No, uh, she's not. She's a woman. <laughs> she's a woman like you, Megyn Kelly, a woman at the peak of her career, unlike Megyn Kelly. But <laughs> she, <laughs> she still is a woman. You easily could just say, listen, you can only fight and compete in the gender in which you were born. Those are just the yeah. rules. End of story. Forget just end it. Okay. But those rules would still let her box with women because, again, <laughs> she's a woman. She's fought as a woman her whole life. She's even lost to other female boxers nine times. What more proof do you want? Does Fox News need the ghost of Roger Ailes to sexually harass her first? <laughs> she's a woman. Okay. Looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, walks like a duck and punches like a duck, I think it's a duck. All right, well, look, so she's not a duck, okay? <laughs> she's a woman. You're not making me question whether I know what a woman is. You're making me question whether you know what a duck is. <laughs> because, again, this female boxer is female. Can we stop this before America turns into a presidential campaign issue? The far left wants to allow biological males to beat the living crap out of women in boxing. Is that really what this race is going to be about? J.D. Vance is going to be out on the campaign trail like, you know, when I was growing up in the holler, the one thing we cared about was international women's boxing regulations. <laughs> By the way, if conservatives are so concerned with women's safety, maybe consider caring about it outside of sports. There are women... There are women in America who are like, help me, I'm having an ectopic pregnancy. And conservatives are like, shut up, we're trying to protect women over here. Look, <laughs> guys, I'm sorry this elite athlete does not look the way you think a woman should look. But a woman is allowed to be dominating and powerful at a sport without you questioning her gender. Because don't forget, these guys... <laughs> don't forget... These guys dragged her, an Algerian female boxer, into their American conservative culture war. And if they're going to use her as a metaphorical punching bag, the least they can do is step into the ring and let her use them as a literal punching bag. I bet they wouldn't even last a round. Since this race has already been so crazy, with Trump getting shot, Biden dropping out, J.D. Vance being J.D. Vance, I'm just glad that we finally have a normal presidential race with normal presidential stories, right? Breaking overnight, RFK Jr. confesses to leaving a dead bear cub in Central Park. Why he said he did not have the time to skin and eat it. What? What? I, I don't know what's worse, that RFK Jr. dumped a dead bear cub in Central Park or that he said he only did it because he didn't have time to eat it. <laughs> Let me just back up here. This happened back in 2014. And I remember when they found that dead bear because you, know, you find dead bodies in Central Park all the time, but <laughs> they're usually tourists, so nobody cares. But, <laughs> but a bear, now that's memorable. A decade ago, a Central Park mystery baffled New Yorkers, captured headlines across the country. Police now want to know how the bear died and how it got into the park. Now we know. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the independent presidential candidate, says he brought the dead bear to Central Park. In the videotaped confession, Kennedy recounts the strange tale to controversial comedian Roseanne Barr. Okay. I'm sorry, he's admitting this to Roseanne Barr? <laughs> in a kitchen over a plate of Flintstone ribs? I mean, what has happened? What is... Does he think it'll sound more normal if he's telling it to a crazy person? You know what, let's not judge him too fast. Let's hear him tell Roseanne Barr how he ended up dumping a dead bear cub in Central Park. 
I was taking a group of people to Falcony and uh, up in Goshen, New York, up in the Hudson Valley. Mm, great start. I was out falconing with my friends. <laughs> so far, very relatable story. And a woman in a van in front of me hit a bear and killed it. A young bear. So I pulled over and I picked up the bear and put him in the back of my van because I was going to skin the bear and it was very good condition and I was going to and put the meat in my refrigerator and you can do that in New York City. You can get a bear tag uh, for a roadkill bear. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You saw Paddington get T-boned and your first thought was, pause the falconing, we gotta get that bear in this car to skin and eat it, which for some reason I know is legal in this state. Yeah, that tracks, that tracks, that tracks. Sorry, uh, keep going. We had a really good day and we went late. We were catching a lot of game. And instead of going back to my home in Westchester, I had to go right to the city because there was a dinner at Peter Luger's Steakhouse. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, all right, let's just do a quick recap, all right? He already spent all day hunting game with falcons. He's on his way to eat a steak, which is a dead cow, but on the way, he had to stop and pick up a dead bear, and this is the environmental candidate? Oh, and by the way... <laughs> and by the way, Peter Luger's Steakhouse, it's a fancy steakhouse. It's not a place where people pull up to the valet with the bear cubs hanging out of the back seat. Hey, here's the keys. Don't steal the rotting bear. I'm going to eat that. And at the end of the dinner, it went late, and I realized I couldn't go home. I had to go to the airport. And the bear was in my car, and I didn't want to leave the bear in the car. Um, because that would have been bad. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, if you wouldn't want your car to smell like rotting bear, then people might think you're a sociopath, you know? That still doesn't explain why he dumped it in Central Park. There'd been a series of bicycle accidents in New York. They had just put in the bike lanes. And saw people, a couple of people had gotten killed. And it was every day. And people had gotten badly injured. Every day it was in the press. And I said, well, I had an old bike in my car that somebody asked me to get rid of. I said, let's go put the bear in Central Park. And we'll make it look like he got hit by a bike. Fun, funny for people. Oh. Ha, 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 I get it. You, you were making a joke about all the people killed by bicycles. Ha, 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 ha. Roseanne gets it, don't you, Roseanne? Can you imagine how weird you have to be for Roseanne to look at you like you're crazy? Honestly, I feel bad for her. She probably thought she was doing a cameo on The Bear. None of this story makes sense. If he was late to the airport, you don't drive into the heart of Manhattan to dump a dead bear. You dump it in the East River. And, and, or you just bring it on the airplane. You call it your emotional support bear carcass. They'll let it on. Look, I will say this. I am one of those people who hates the two-party system. But if this is the candidate of the third party, I say, screw it, let's just have a king. <laughs> This is big news. Kamala Harris has selected Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as her running mate, and the reactions are pouring in. I think Tim Walz uh, could be an excellent governing partner to Kamala Harris and a real asset here. He does come across as someone who is really relatable. Somebody that people just enjoy spending time with. A Trump campaign fundraising text message that went out to supporters goes, quote, Tim Walz will unleash hell on earth. Okay, but mostly positive. <laughs> One, unleash hell on earth, but mostly positive. Okay, obviously, there's some disagreement here, so let's find out about this Tim Walls, which, by the way, it's not Waltz. It's Walls, W-A-L-Z. You see, he's suffering from low T. <laughs> Trump, you can have that one if you want. Now, obviously, I already know all about Tim Walls, as I have a, I have a well of knowledge about every governor in America, even the ones from the boring states, but since... You guys have probably never heard of this guy before. I Googled him in a panic on your behalf this morning. And what I found out is that Tim Walls got a lot done as governor. He, he legalized marijuana, passed family. Yeah, it's a weed crowd. Yeah, he passed family and sick leave. He codified abortion rights and he provided... And he provided free meals for all school kids, which... 
which makes him ironic VP pick. Democrats said, man, you've done so much as governor. We'd like to promote you to a position where you'll do absolutely nothing. <laughs> but if you ask me, his appeal to this ticket isn't just the record as governor. It's his overall vibe, you know? And that vibe, it's Midwestern dad as f Hey, everybody, Tim here, 11 days till the election, but uh, it's my pro tip of the day out on the road. I, I gotta show you this. Uh, this right here is the headlight harness on a 2014 Ford Edge. Ford, this is unacceptable. It burned out hot on the, uh, the connector. So for uh, $7.99 at Napa Auto Parts here in the city, you can replace this. Just clip off the back, use some shrink wrap connectors on there, tape it back together and put it back in. It's about a five minute fix and you're back on the road safe and sound. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, that is the most dad video I've ever seen in my life. That is a man who watches Band of Brothers while standing up with his arms crossed. <laughs> if, if this dude becomes vice president, they're gonna find him out on the White House lawn changing the oil on a Predator drone. Don't call the Pentagon, they'll charge you an arm and a leg. All it needs is a countersunk head bolt. Come here, I'll show you, come here. Now here's another classic Midwestern dad thing. He's got a Gen Z daughter, and he doesn't quite understand her. Every year, we as a family do something old and something new, but then we're going to go get some food. Corn dog? I'm vegetarian. Turkey, then? And Turkey's then... meat. Oh. He's trying so hard. He's trying so hard. You don't eat meat? Well, fish isn't meat, and turkey's kind of like fish. Let's get a cheeseburger, huh? <laughs> I will still admit, it makes it hard. It makes it harder for the alt right to call you a soy boy when you're like bison is a vegetable. <laughs> and Tim Walz is not just a Midwestern dad now. He's been a Midwestern dad his whole life. He served in the National Guard. He has his own award-winning tater tots hot dish. How much more Midwestern can he get? In 1994, he married fellow school teacher Gwen Walls. They moved to Mankato in the mid-90s, where he began teaching and coaching football at Mankato West High School. Oh, my God. He was a small-town high school football coach, and he's been married for 30 years, and he's eating... A bucket of cookies? <laughs> Leave it to Minnesota to measure cookies by the bucket. This guy is almost too Midwestern. Even his bad stuff is still Midwestern. In 1995, Tim Walls was arrested in Nebraska for driving under the influence. He was driving 96 miles an hour in a 55 mile per hour zone. Well, yeah, I mean, of course he was driving that fast. He had to get home before he heard anybody driving drunk. <laughs> He's from the Midwest, I should know. So yes, Tim Walls has a DUI arrest, but just one. So no wonder voters elected him governor. He's the most responsible driver in the whole Midwest. <laughs> Yesterday, Kamala Harris announced her vice presidential pick is Tim Walls, Minnesota governor and Guy who just found a quarter behind your ear. <laughs> and last night, she took her shiny new running mate out for a spin at a rally in Philly. Violent crime was up under Donald Trump. That's not even counting the crimes he committed. So say it with me. We aren't going back. We aren't going back. In Minnesota, we respect our neighbors and their personal choices that they make. Even if we wouldn't make the same choice for ourselves, there's a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. Whoa. Whoa. A Minnesotan saying, damn, that's spicy. <laughs> but if you watch this rally, it's clear Democrats are in a much happier place than they were a few weeks ago. They're like, why do my hands keep banging together like a seal? Are the corners of my mouth going up? Why? Am I sick? <laughs> Even I felt it, and I'm dead inside. And part of this is that Tim Waltz creates excitement because he's a new main character. It's like when you've had the same mailman for 20 years, and then a new guy comes around, and you're like, you know, this time I'm going to learn this guy's name, right? <laughs> what can I say? I'm a good person. So 
The point is, this energy is great for Democrats and terrible for Republicans, which is why they spent all day trying to find an angle of attack on Tim Walz. And I'm open to hearing it. I don't want to be partisan. So Republicans, I'd like to hear a serious critique from one of your sharpest minds. Let's bring in Scott Shelley this morning. Uh, what do you think of Walz as the vice presidential pick, Scott? I'm going to guess this guy's response is moo. I mean, I mean it, you know, you know, let's give him a chance. Let's give him a chance. He might have a very valid critique of Tim Walz's policies. Let's hear him out. Let's hear him out. What do you think of Walz as the vice presidential pick, Scott? Look, Stuart, he's not a serious candidate. All right. <laughs> not serious, huh? I, I agree. I hate having to listen to unserious people. You know, it really pulls my udders. Look, here's... <laughs> Here's a rule of thumb. You're not allowed to talk about being serious if you have to milk your clothes before putting them up. <laughs> now, to be fair, there are real policy issues Republicans have been hitting walls on, like helping undocumented immigrants get health care and his reaction to the George Floyd protests. But they just can't resist a story like this. He supports putting tampons in the boys' bathrooms for kids as young as the fourth grade. He says Republicans are weird Yet this is the governor who put tampons in the boys' bathroom. A nickname for Tim Walls is Tampon Tim. Tampon Tim. We need to introduce Tampon Tim to the world. Tampon Tim. <laughs> Tampon Tim. That sounds like a fictional character parents tell their daughter about when she gets her first period. You know, like, <laughs> look, look what Tampon Tim left under the sink, honey. Super plus overnights. You've got your mom's flow and we couldn't be prouder. <laughs> but basically, what happened is that Walls passed a law that put free tampons in all public schools, including boys' bathrooms. With, with, with all due respect to Tampon Tim, I really just don't care about this, you know? Best case scenario, a trans kid gets tampons. Worst case, the weird kid in class puts them up his nose and pretends to be a walrus. <laughs> which is also best case scenario. <laughs> Personally, as someone who was a 13-year-old boy, it doesn't matter what you put in that bathroom. Whatever it is, they're gonna draw a penis on it. <laughs> they're gonna rip it off the wall and try to flush it down the toilet. It's either that or go to geography, and I'm not gonna waste my time with that. Anyways, <laughs> Tim Walls, the governor of Minnesota, which is the capital of Alaska, doesn't seem to be overtly problematic which is why Republicans are accusing him of hiding something. This is a guy who hides behind his flannel jacket, but he's actually a wolf in sheep's clothing who cannot be trusted. A progressive in sheep's clothing. Governor Waltz is a uh, socialist in sheep's clothing. But he's a freak in sheep's clothing. He's a freak. He's a freak in sheep's clothing. That's ridiculous. Not like cow's clothing. That's normal. <laughs> but a sheep, what a freak. Yeah, I know. It's so good. By the way, isn't sheep's clothing just like a wool sweater? I love wearing sheep's clothing in the fall. I can, I can make so many more cute outfits, you know? <laughs> Senior portraits here on High, 98. But yes, Tim Walls may be a former football coach, a hunter, a guy who looks like he has his own homemade dry rub, but Republicans are saying... Don't be fooled by the moderate vibes. Tim Walls is a secret communist. And nobody is more on board with this line of attack than Donald Trump himself. He's a very, uh, very liberal man, if you want to know the truth. He's probably about the same uh, as Bernie Sanders. He's probably more so than Bernie Sanders. She is more so than Bernie Sanders. There's never been a ticket like this. This is a ticket that would want this country go, to go communist immediately, if not sooner. <laughs> Immediately, if not sooner? <laughs> There's no sooner. That's what makes it immediately. <laughs> if you tell someone you want something sooner than immediately, they're going to be late because they're going to waste their time thinking, what kind of idiot says immediately, if not sooner? <laughs> By the way, yeah. By the way, when Joe Biden rambled like this, all of us were like, this man is obviously senile. But now that he's dropped out, it's becoming more obvious that Trump's brain isn't exactly in great shape either. And 
He should get that looked at immediately, if not sooner. <laughs> Joseph rode hard and put away wet Biden. <laughs> He just gave his first interview since he dropped out of the race. And after a few weeks of resting, being out of the spotlight, I bet he's energized and mistake free. Are you confident that there will be a peaceful transfer of power in January 2025? If Trump wins, no, I'm not confident at all. I mean, if Trump loses, I'm not confident at all. Nailed it. Look, that was a huge mix-up, but everyone relax, okay? He, he, remember, he's not the candidate anymore. He's just the president. So, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> Two months ago, watching a video like this would have driven me to start freebasing Percocet, but <laughs> now that he's not the nominee, I can just freebase Percocet for fun. No, I, I'm just kidding. I don't do it for fun. I do it because I'm addicted. Let's move on. And finally, let's move on to someone we wish would get stuck in space, Elon Musk. <laughs> Ever since he took over X, formerly known as Twitter, formerly known as a good website, he's lost every advertiser except Cheech and Chong, which is what tends to happen when your entire website is just Nazis peddling cryptocurrency to porn bots. So to get advertisers back, Musk could clean up Twitter, or he could do this. Elon Musk's social media platform X is suing a group of major advertisers over an alleged ad boycott. The suit claims the group organized to block billions of dollars of ad revenue over its concern about a change in brand safety standards since Musk acquired the platform back in 2022. The lawsuit comes despite Musk previously claiming that he didn't care if brands pulled their advertisements. There was all of the criticism. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger I hope today. They stop. You hope... Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. Go f*** yourself. <laughs> but... Go f*** yourself. Is that clear? Uh, I hope it is. Wow. Wow, interesting. I didn't think it was possible to look uncool while wearing a leather jacket and telling people to go f*** themselves, but he pulled it off somehow. Now, the go f*** yourself guy might not be the best person to convince you that this lawsuit isn't frivolous and desperate and pathetic, but luckily, Elon Musk hired this lady, Linda Yaccarino, and as the CEO of Twitter, it's her job to give his childish outburst the veneer of grown-up reasoning, and she explained this whole situation perfectly. Hey, everybody. I was shocked by the evidence uncovered by the House Judiciary Committee that a group of companies organized a systematic illegal boycott against X. These organizations targeted our company and you, our users. That puts your global town square, the one place that you can express yourself freely and openly, at long-term risk. No small group of people should be able to monopolize what gets monetized. Rest assured, X has never been more committed to innovating and expanding all of our global town square. Mm. Wow. <laughs> that was a lot of unnecessary hand gestures. <laughs> and can we cool it with the global town square thing? This isn't the only website for people to express their thoughts, okay? You know, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Reddit. I've got an OnlyFans where I scoop oatmeal with my feet. I'm fine. <laughs> And I don't do apple cinnamon, so stop asking, okay? 